Okay, away you go, mate. Well, welcome. William John Stanley Puddy, is that correct? Willem, it's Willem. My is it Willem? Yeah, I know William. another Willem. Yeah, it's Dutch. Ah, oh, uh, Dutch, that's not French. Um, <laughs> 4th of October, 87. That's it, yeah. 32 years young. Yeah. And funny enough, you look younger than Spence, who's 24. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're seeing. Also, I was going to do a bit of an introduction, obviously, well, because I've looked and I know a bit about you anyway, but you've had more clubs than Jack Nicholas. So probably the highlights for me are probably Bristol Rovers, Cheltenham, where you've been like, in a, a lot of league experience, which will be handy for us in the uh, coming season. Yeah. What's um, been the best club you feel that you've been at? Bristol Rovers would be, um, from the from playing sort of side, would be the best club. Mainly because of the fans. Um, we were on an absolute roll when I was there and they were, they were packing it out, 10,500 in the Mem is uh, is quite enjoyable to play in. Play yeah. I get that, that's for sure. And also, Orgs is with us. Gary, Jeremy Horgan. <laughs> um, it's actually um, Andrew related to struggling. No, it's Jeremy. It's actually birthdays close to mine. It's, you're a Taurus. Is that right? Aries, mate. Oh, you just fall into Aries? Yeah, Never mind. just. 43. Yeah. 43. I'll tell you what, you look a lot younger than Spence. You're like Peter Pan. <laughs> Looking great for it. Um, so I'll, I'll come and ask you a couple of questions. But for, for, for you, Will, um, the fans are going to be delighted that you've decided to, to stay again for another year at Chippenham. Um, what was important for you towards the end of the season when we come in, and um, what were we? What's your hopes for probably next season? Important for me was uh, the intensity of the team, and it, like adding that sort of seriousness to each each week and a result. Um, really putting us under pressure as players and individuals to take responsibility for what we're doing uh, to dig us out of what we were in at that point. Um, and I felt that. That we got that got across to us as players and me as an individual, and uh, I felt that helped me towards the end of the season. Yeah, and I think you're probably exactly the same as what other players are saying, where the analysis coming in, where we're you're sitting down on a Thursday and you're seeing the good bits, um, who we're up against, how we can beat them. I think other players have said the same, so just adding that little bit seems to have helped. Um, mm-hmm. Hawks, you've obviously decided to stay for another year as well, which is great yep. for us. Um, Explain your decision and, and what changes have you seen? Um, similar to Will, really. I suppose <clears throat> one of the biggest things that, that when you guys took over, I mean, it's easy to just come in and say one of the big things is, is to restore confidence. You can't just come in and, and tell players that they're good players and then that gives you that, that lift. It doesn't. You have to bring them on that journey. And I think that was the key thing, was getting the players to buy into what you guys wanted to do at that time. Um, and I think the biggest part of, of that journey was making sure that everybody was accountable for what they were delivering. And that was made easier by bringing things like huddle in. So, you know, previously it may have just been a piece of paper that said, look, this is what you're doing, doing and doing. Um, and that sort of side of the analysis. But really sitting down on Thursdays and, and analysing stuff, not to really dig players out, but to really give them accountability and responsibility for their own performances. And, and I think that showed as and when we got through. Um, because you brought players on that journey because they were then, as I say, absolutely accountable for that. But it was a challenge for them that, that each and every one of them rose to. And I think if you're that type of character and the squad that we've got, they rose to that challenge and that, that was a big thing for them. I think um, as well, what, uh, sitting there and watching how we train is quite important as well. And I think when you take a step back or... Um, we might be fortunate enough to have Phil film some of the training and some of us coaching, which also then helps us develop. Um, as three of us are coaches on here, it's important that we just don't feed the information to the players. I think, like Cookie, back me up here. Quite often, like when we went to Gloucester, Cookie asked me to put on a session, and Phil would film me. Um, and then we go back, and I think we we're working on switching play because that's how we were going to beat the opposition. Um, and it was really important that I understood, well, where was I stood when I was coaching, what detail I was giving, and, and uh, Cookie will give you a bit more. Um, how do you feel that can work next year, Cookie, for obviously Orgs, myself, 
people got asked from yourself? Yeah, I, I mean, I just think um, recruiting Gaz alongside as well is important. What he's like as a person, and I mean that in the football sense, because he's obviously got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of respect in that changing room. Uh, we're also going to tap into um, his recruitment um, ideas on what he thinks about players and stuff. So, you know, it, uh, it's all a bit strange when you first go in for everybody in the first week or two and people are trying to work work people out. But I've got to say, when, when we've uh, worked with Gaz, he's, he's done some great little things and he's quickly become part of the coaching staff. And, um, you know, this year we're going to tap into him, maybe specialising a little bit more in the goalkeeping department and also with the defenders at the back when we're in possession. So we'll be looking to play out from the back a little bit more. So we'll have a big say on that. Um, and obviously from, from Will's point of view, we think it's important that he has got somebody that he can, you know, rely on for the training side of things, keeping him fit but also the match day prep as well. I mean, we, we can also tap into Phil, who's the analysis guy, because Phil's a goalkeeper. So um, the only problem is he's got an injured shoulder at the moment, so serving-wise and diving around can't do too much. But um, he, he he's one of those that we could uh, also tap into. Yeah, I don't think probably all just hit the nail on the head where it's pretty much everyone has the same kind of um, echo about, well, this is what we needed. And it's easy because you look at last year and Chip and I had such a great cup run, it's only inevitable that sometimes your league form dips and then you end up getting into a rut and you end up going, right, how are we going to get out of this? And sometimes change is what it needs. Um, and not just maybe, sometimes it's not as management level, it's maybe personnel and players. Um, and hence why some have stayed and some are gone. Um, Cookie, we spoke a lot about new signings and about people coming in. Obviously, it's great that we've secured Will. Um, can you talk about the other players that are staying, obviously, from last year? Because they were a really big um, influence on us doing well towards the end of the season. Yeah, they were. And they've got to get credit for that as well. I mean, just to go back to Will, I've known Will probably 12, 13 years, I think it is. So, um, you know, I know him from his Chelten Town days. So I've always thought he's a, he's a great goalkeeper. Um, he's one of those that we're going to need to wrap up in a bit of cotton wool because we're only going to have one goalkeeper this year. I know that, um, you know, the, the budget sort of dictates that a little bit, but uh, we have got people like Hanksy that's played in goal and, um, you know, say if somebody gets sent off or injured, he can always come in and, um, you know, do that little role for us. But in relation to people like Reese Tyler and uh, Kieran Parcell, Ryan Case, Callum Gunner, George Rigg, um, Pratty and uh, Zeb, you know, without them being 100% committed, we, we would have struggled um, last year. And I just thought once, once we got everything sorted out after the first sort of month, then, um, you know, people were buying into what we were doing and it, it worked really well. So just really looking forward to working with those lads again for this season. Yeah, I think they're quite valuable to what we want to achieve with the lads that are coming in because... Wholesale changes make it really difficult, like you just said. So the more that we could have kept of that, because that was it. We were quite fortunate to take over and we discussed it. It was a better squad that you took over at Chippenham than by far that you took over at your previous club. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. And, you know, you, you can, that's when you look at training and you're looking at, um, I mean, I can remember one session where we did um, just some basic uh, crossing and finishing and the quality that we were getting in from the fullbacks and the attacking players was unbelievable and um, you just looked at this you thought if this clicks on a Saturday this, this is you know four or five attacking players that we've got in advanced positions of the park um, you know we must create opportunities and I think you know as a, as a team going forward that's what we enjoy coaching that side of things. We want to be creative. We want to be expressive with the players and give them the license to go out there and, and basically show them, you know, what they're made of. And uh, the, some of those sessions that we had in those, those early days, there was, there's not one session that you walked out of it. You thought, oh my God, you know, we're in trouble. We've got, we got a bad team, yeah? We've actually got some good players. So, you know, the, um, the challenge is to kick on 
and keep going what uh, what we started basically. Yeah, definitely. Will, as I said, you're 32. Some consider you to probably be just coming into your prime now. Um, what your personal? What do you want to? How long do you want to play on for? What's your aspirations and what do you want to do after football? Is there, have you got some kind of plan? I want to play for as long as possible. Really, I feel like you say. I, th I things stopped a little bit for me a few years ago, and I feel the last couple of years have been really good getting back playing. And I'd like to kick on. And I think Chippenham, um, with yourselves, uh, is a great place to be to sort of push on to the next level. Um, personally, uh, really get some games under my belt. Uh, I feel I've got at least ten years left in me. Uh, and uh, I think I've got plenty of time as a goalkeeper. What you guys are trying to bring into Chippen as well with playing out from the back is something I've always wanted to add to my game even more so. Um, so that side of things I'm really looking forward to. Um, and I have been thinking about life after football as well. Um, I've started uh, studying uh, the ACA, which is an accountancy qualification, which would take me a few years to do that. Um, and it's a good distraction, actually. I've managed to, doing that the last few years has really sort of helped me sort of take my mind away from football when you're away, away from training and playing games. And um, you mentioned playing out from the back. The key part of that is, is also your two, five, six, three, four and eight. Because if, if they don't give you an option to get on the ball, you kind of look pretty stupid at times. So um, that's where Orgs, Cookie, Oscar, and we've really got to get it into the rest because you're buying into it. It's great, but everybody else has got to buy into the way that we want to play. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, like, like you say, it's, it's the bravery. And I think uh, being brave on the ball in those situations is, can be tough at times, especially when it comes to a Saturday. In training, we can try it and it, it can work. But having that bravery on a Saturday and a Tuesday night when you've got strikers really wanting to take that ball off you is, is something that will come, I feel, with, with practice and, and, and the training that we will do, I'm sure. Oh, so a question for you. What's your kind of aspirations? Obviously, as I said, you only look 28. So you've got plenty of years left about what you want to achieve during your football. What's, what's your next steps? Obviously, ideally it's with us, but there's always aspirations around bettering yourself. Yeah, I mean, personally, I know, obviously, when you guys first took over, um, you know, we, we sat down and talked a little bit about this and, and talked about my qualifications at the moment. So this was more so, a, I, I guess, a, a role that I fell into, first of all, and I've really enjoyed it and I enjoy the, the learning side of it. But most of that learning is, like I said, I know we attended a couple of webinars and, and whatever else over the summer. So I enjoy that side of it. It's probably just trying to go out and, and get myself the, the the actual industry-wide qualifications and actually do my budget properly and, 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 and go on and progress through there, really, and, and continue learning. Um, as part of this group, which, which I feel is the same, I think what you guys have brought in as well, and, and knowing that I don't feel there's loads in there that is, you know, completely new to me. Um, a lot of it's the, the same stuff, just a different take on it on those types yeah. of things. Um, so, yeah, just, just the same thing, really, just to, to continue learning it in, as part of this group um, and, and then move through, um, as I said, probably hopefully trying to, to, to get those qualifications. And I think a lot of it is is tweaking i often see a lot of sessions and it kind of might not work and a lot of it doesn't work for chipping them but you tweak it and it will work and and you play with it and that's where it really works when you come on to a tuesday and a thursday um, as cookie knows because cookie's been on these for quite a few times um i wouldn't be doing my role correct on this if i did not pull a, together a quiz um <laughs> Because there's two of you, it's going to be a heads up and there will be a forfeit for you two pre-season. It's Will versus Orcs. Okay. My money is probably on Will. And I only mean that because I've tailored his questions. But <laughs> um, we'll see how we go. All right. Will, you're up first. Yeah. Okay. Which keeper has had the most clean sheets in the Premier League history and how many were there? Oh, crikey. Peter Schmeichel. Peter Schmeichel? Yeah. How many do you think? How many he would have had? Yeah. He was there for quite a few years, wasn't he? I'm going to go 200. 
It's 20. Uh, 20. 20 got the first name right. It's Peter Check. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to pass it over. No, you get your own questions. One. You get your own questions. Don't be so greedy. You would have got that as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, and he would have said 202. Really close. Oh, about 180, I would have gone. Uh, Neil Poir, Orcs. The top transfer fee received by a Premier League club is two. Is 106 million pounds. Who was the player? Was it the club and the player, or just the player? Well, you can give me the club as well to show I don't off. Know I don't either, know either. But what's that? I don't know either. Um, <laughs> was it the club Liverpool? And your guess of a player? Coutinho? Correct. Oh, well, I was going to push in for time then, Will. Apologies. Yeah. Will, you're going to lose now because I don't think you're going to get this. In which year did Peter Shilton win his record-breaking 109th cap for England? Yeah, you're quite right. Um... I'll just check that you were alive. <laughs> yes, you were alive. 1988. Just. 1988. Nine. Nine. Well done. Yeah, 1989. Nine. So go to well, correct. So we go to the last one to make it interesting. I have got a playoff question. Orcs. I don't. You, this is a tough question. Who are the most northerly, southerly, westerly, and easterly clubs in the top four divisions? So, which clubs at furthest north, south, east, and west? Just to simplify, because you're from Swindon. Carlisle? Yeah, got to be. This is done on a sporting quiz from the 15th of April. Okay, so Carlisle's in north, south. Plymouth. Okay. East and West. Uh, Someone near Dover. Norwich. Pass on them too, I think. Okay. Norwich. Not supposed to well. Not supposed to well, doing well. Okay. North is Newcastle. Yeah. Okay. South is Plymouth. Correct. East is Norwich, and believe it or not, West is also Plymouth. Cool. Yeah. I was thinking, Dan, I didn't know what would be further. Okay, so it's a draw. Sure. Okay. Now you've got to guess what was Chippenham's as a tiebreaker to the nearest highest ever attendance, okay, of Chippenham Town. Three thousand. Um, I'm assuming it was the Vars final, whatever that was, 20,000 maybe. Surely it's got um, at Hewish Park or. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's got to be a Chippenham game. A home uh, game. Well, they, they did play in it. <laughs> well, a home game then, if you're going to be like that. All oh, right, okay. Um, were either of us alive at this point? Not from the um, no. Sorry, can't get more than three thousand. Three thousand, that's got to be. Unless they're packing. Have there. a guess, Orcs. We've got to rush you. Um, three and a bit thousand versus Bath one time. Um, so that's what I'm. I'm going to go for. You're correct to go higher. It was four thousand eight hundred back in nineteen fifty one. Versus Chippenham United. Derby. Okay. Will, unfortunately, that makes you the loser, which means you're going to have to run until you're sick with Alex Bray and a few others. <laughs> Was Alex Bray? We got it wrote down. So, enjoy pre season. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well done, both of you, really. Good effort. Um, Will, we wasn't there for the full whole season last year, um, but who would you say your player of the season was last year? 
I think there's quite a few. I think it was a, it was a, it was a long season, a long long season. I think uh, players at the back. Short like, with COVID nineteen. What are you going on about? <laughs> it was a long season. Come to <laughs> come suit me for March. That felt long. <laughs> um, uh, with with the, with the cut runs and that, I think defensively, I'm always going to pick a defender because that's just the only part of the game I look at. Um, but I think players like Kieran Parcel at the back, um, ever present, um, going through through tough games and, and good games, but on on average was was a fantastic player for us. And the same question to you, Orbs? Um Yeah, I'd probably say say Pars. Um, I think he was outstanding at the start of the season, and then I think he he continued that. He was very consistent in that in that respect, um, and also maybe another one to jump on your bandwagon, Mac, a little bit like Spence in terms of people forget he's only I think twenty two, twenty three because he looks a lot older and he's been around forever. Yeah. And I think you know took on the captaincy last year, and I think he really took that on board and he, and he grew within that role as well. Um, I think he sort of put himself forward as a bit of a leader last year, um, scored some goals at some crucial times, um, yeah. so pro- probably shaded it. Um, but like Will said, I think the season is, whilst it was cut short, is is long. And people tend to forget those start, you know, how, how well we did at the start. And, and, and Will was one of those probably, I, and I know you're the stato for these sort of types, but I think Will ended up saving however many penalties it was in that first start of the run of the season, which, you know, at times it's quite easy. People forget you know, the saves that Will made at maybe nil-nil a couple of times and, and to keep us in games. And, you know, it's easy to then say your forwards have, have, have won you a game with a, with a tap in towards the end. So I think Will had a really, really strong season, um, certainly particularly at the start, but probably, yeah, just shaded by uh, Kieran Parcel for me. And um, Cookie, going on to that about um, Will making some penalty saves and say, I think as we play as a team where we want to get players forward to score goals and be expansive. He's, that's going to be an important part of his job, isn't it? Keeping us in games if we're trying to go forward with tempo and pace. Yeah, and I think um, I think he did that well um, in the sort of 10-11 um, games that we've done. And there was a couple of saves. I remember there was one at um, Hemel Hempstead when we were looking for our first result, you know, to win a game. And um, at that stage, I think we were one nil up, and he's he's stopped a, a shot from point blank range, uh, which was fantastic. We all looked at each other on the bench and said, you know, how did he how did he make that save? So yeah, we we know his qualities, we know what it's all about, and you know we're really really pleased that he's going to be part of the setup for next year, and uh, you know hopefully we can have another successful year. And um, any news on? When we're thinking pre-season might start? Um, I've been saying it now for a couple of months, but I don't think we're going to kick off um, in August. The actual games programme, I think, is going to be at its earliest. It's going to be September. Um, If it is September, then obviously pre-season games that we've already booked in for July, they're going to have to be moved to August. Um, So they'll they'll probably be that little knock-on effect, I think, of that month, six weeks at the beginning of the season. Um, I have heard that they're trying to get the season wrapped up by May. So they may go um, a little bit further than April into May time. And that's, that you know could give you a, a sort of eight-month season. But um, I think they're really keen to finish it you know, before um, May 21 finishes. So um, there's a lot of leagues above us and the cup competitions and even you know, like the Champions League that they all want to be done and dusted by June. So that has a massive knock-on effect for everybody else. That'll be for the Euros. <clears throat> yeah, and obviously the Euros have to be played as well. So, uh, you know, there's, it, we, we've got to be done whatever it's going to be. Um, and, I, and I don't mean to be rude to our players, but I don't think any of them are going to make the Euro squad. So I think we should be OK. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Have you got a nice little bit of sun just by your eyes? Yeah, I'm just just in the uh, in the shade bit at the moment. If we go on another two minutes, I'm going to get burnt. I'm like a vampire, mate. <laughs> I can tell. Um, look, really appreciate you joining us tonight, and obviously, Will, we're obviously really pleased that um, yourself and Orgs have decided to stay. That's great. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good on, boys.
Cheers, boys. Thank you.